hand speed of Calvin yes. is something to behold. Listen, anybody that's going through some stuff, anybody that's going through some failures and setbacks in their lives, man, listen, you guys can do it if you get your mind right, you get your body right. Calvin Gastelum! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. I'm looking at myself. I look fat and old. Matt, it's good to see you, buddy. What are you talking about? I just hate the way my head and neck looks. Um, we have a good show today. Our buddy, uh, Kellen Gastelum, who we have not talked to in a while, and Juliana Pena. This is how long we've been doing this show, Matt. She hasn't been on in five years. What? I believe 2017, which I read that and I was stunned that you and I, that's right. Didn't we start this in 2016? I mean, it's a long time. It's, it's been a minute. I like saying that. Yeah, but you're right. It has been. Um, it really has been. And I want to see how life changed. Yeah. Juliana Pena since she shocked the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I already kind of know my opening question is going to be. What is that? So Juliana, did you feel like a lion tamer when you quieted the roar of the lioness? Oh, Wait, you don't I, like that? I, I don't think you should start with that. No, is that, I thought that was a great, powerful question. No, no, no. You got to, you got to cut that up a little bit. Okay. Something else, maybe. How about, um, so Juliana riddle me this when you were first announced to fight the lioness, did you think you would need a chair in there to tame her? Did you say riddle me this? Riddle me this. Yeah. I'm trying to like young it up a little bit for a younger demo. Is that good? I'm looking over the car. I mean, no, I, I, <laughs> But I am so, listen, it is, I, I've been in similar shoes, you know what I mean? So that's one thing. That's right. They were comparing it like one of the biggest. I don't know if people get offended by that, if they're in that thing, like if it's a big upset because why everybody doubted me, that type of thing. I never got, I like. No, people. it's it shouldn't be an insult. Everyone, I mean, what Habib said about it was insulting. But I, I think that saying that a, a fighter who is as dominant as George St. Pierre or as dominant as Amanda Nunes, who has just seemed unbeatable, to say that you came in and shocked the world is not an insult at all. It's like, wow, this amazing uh, person overthrew this seemingly unbeatable fighter. There's no insult to that at all. Jimmy. Yes, sir. You know what's bothering me? What did I do? I don't know why it's bothering me. My face? Never, never. Okay, buddy. I want If I was in, in the studio, I'd pinch your cheeks. <laughs> like, you know, I keep thinking of this Will Smith thing, and I don't want to talk about negative stuff. And you know why? Because they keep putting it in your face. You keep sure. Seeing it's a big story, yeah. And uh, it, it, you know, this is the thing, and I and I tell this to my students and everything. There's too many idiots out there uh, that deserve a smack. You can't smack everybody. You can't. Right. You're gonna get. You're gonna go to jail. Like you don't think. On a regular basis, I you know I wouldn't mind smacking somebody. In the yeah, <laughs> you know you don't think I gotta control that shit? What if I would have got up and just smacked that you little Joshua Fabia in the face when he's annoying me? I, I mean, right? Who knows? A couple more minutes. No, I'm kidding. Right. But uh, no. But the thing is this, you know this this guy, a holly like it. It just shows you, man, how it's just wrong. How could this guy smack somebody on public television? For the world to see live television, and there's no repercussions. Oh, there will be though. Ejected. He doesn't get ejected from the thing. He doesn't get. I know. Uh, you know, I mean, is, I, you know, he sits down. He's still yelling at him. I, I feel bad for Chris Rock. I really do. He, you know why? They th this is my theory, Matt. This is why. I get away I with that. No one else is getting away with that. Here's my guess. My guess as to why they didn't eject him twofold. One. 
I think he's one of the biggest stars in Hollywood and everyone is such a pussy in that business. They're afraid of making the wrong decision and going, you eject him. And also it's a live TV show. So I think they're afraid is what if Will won't get up and leave? Do we have a cop dragging out one of the largest superstars in our business on live television? What do we do? I, I just think that they are, they were so ill-equipped to handle that that they just probably figured, okay, his publicist said he'll calm down, we'll deal with it after the show. That's my only guess, but you're right, I think they, sh- I think they should have dragged him out by his fucking ears on live television. They should have just arrested him and dragged him out, but I think that they just panicked because there's no, there's no precedent for that. This is, this is the first time it's ever happened, so they didn't, they, no one ever thought it would happen. You know what I think, Jimmy, and it might not be popular, and it might not be, it might not be popular, but this is what I think. Personally, this, this is not the joke. It has nothing to do with the joke. I'm the wife with the hair. I think not too long ago. And by the way, I don't even think Chris knew she had alopecia. I've been told he didn't even know. I don't think he did either. But I, I, you know, I think you know. But I think not too long ago, we all know about Will Smith around that the red tape with his wife, and she's talking about the entanglement with that rapper. Yep. She had a little fling with this guy, and he looked yep. like a fucking he looked like a cuckold in fuck in front of the whole world. And he's sitting in, and he's there's a lot of memes about that, and there's a lot of things with him just yep. like you know, kind of like a punk. His wife made him yeah. a punk. I'm sure there's a lot of people he wanted to smack. Yeah. And Chris Rock, and he had that built inside of him because he looked like a fucking fool. And I think he took it out on poor Chris Rock. And uh, that's why I think there's a lot of there's uh, several of the people he wanted to really smack. I'm assuming he was drunk too. To do that at the Oscars and to yell like that, to allow the rage to bubble over there, I'm assuming he, I, I'm just guessing, I don't know Will, but I'm assuming he had a couple of drinks. Uh, and most people who talk shit to him, he's probably not in the room for it. Most times it's happened, the person probably has not been right there. So this is probably a weird, a, a weird time where somebody joked about it and he just flipped out. But people say that Chris, how come Chris didn't move? Because Chris, when Will walked on stage, Chris is probably assuming that this is a bit. I mean, he's the one of the biggest stars in the business. You don't think he's coming up to be physical live on the Oscars. It, it probably, Chris probably figured they were going to have some funny confrontation or bullshit, whatever, you know? Jimmy, he yes, had sir. his hands behind his back. Yes, he had no expectations of being hit. So it almost looked like, it looked, it, for a second, it looked like a Hollywood slap. Like, like something out of a movie. But it wasn't a movie. He really slapped him. How? That's right. Who the fuck is this guy? Why? Because he's in Hollywood. There's not. He's. Well, I mean, oh, Chris Rock didn't press charges. Why the fuck does he have to press charges? We all right. see what the fuck happened. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's. It's. You know why I'm mad with it? I'm mad about it. Because well, I. I mean, not that I want the right to smack somebody, but if that was me, I'm not seeing my wife and kid. I'm going to be locked up. I'm going to. That's right. Happen. You know what I mean? Who the fuck is he? Because That's what? Because right. he made a lot of movies? I don't know. Fuck that guy. They were ill-equipped. And I, I, I dislike the Academy for it. But I, I think that the only defense you can have of them is they were so... Because it, it was live, they, they literally... It would be like if a fucking alien landed on the stage, they would have been less shocked than Will Smith slapping somebody in the face live. I, I just think that they had no idea what to do. And because it was live, they're like, okay. And I also think the real crime is those fucking assholes giving Will Smith a standing ovation after. That's, they're the worst. Not only is he ejected from the place, he's not ejected from the place, he's doing a fucking speech. Uh, we got Kel- the great Kelvin. Calvin, Gass- Calvin Gaslam, yeah. Great Calvin Gaslam coming in. We're going to talk to him. Yep. Uh, Will Smith, I think, is just a, a bully, a punk, and a cuck. Let's yeah, go. Exactly. And, but the, the, the cuck the, the cuck part I like. I definitely <laughs> What's up, Muscle Beach? How you doing, man? Oh, time no see, man. Yeah, it's been a month. It's been a minute. We were just talking about the the Will uh the Will Smith uh slap, and it's funny, like whatever, like as a comedian, when I see something like that, every comic wishes that we had the skill set you guys do because I, I, Chris wasn't expecting it, but I'm sure that somebody in your position, you would have just instinctively known that this was about to be more than just a bit. Uh, sorry, repeat that one more time. I was just saying that whenever we like the Will Smith thing, when something like that happens, you know, a, a Chris was a comedian was not expecting it to be physical. Yeah. I'm sure as fighters, your instincts are much better for someone's intentions as they're walking up to you. 
Yeah, but at the same time, I'm so afraid to retaliate that I might I might actually like kill or or it really injure somebody bad. So I I probably will do a better job. I do a better job. Than most people I think are straining myself. Um, but I you gotta commend uh, you gotta commend Chris Rock though, man. He 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 stayed classy. He stayed professional. Uh, he looks like he's got a hell of a chin. You know, so uh, he took he took a good one. You know what, Kelly? You're, it's funny. You're right. Michael Bisping told a story, Matt. You remember where he some some asshole punched him in public, and it didn't hurt. But Michael doesn't respond because, again, when you guys respond, there's a there's a much different level of consequences than if a regular person responds. Yes, and but 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 me, that's just something that I've had uh, ever since I was young. It's like if I retaliate, if I something to somebody i'm gonna hurt them bad and that's always been a fear of mine so i, I actually never been in a street fight did you did you ever have that when you were a kid once where you where there was a kid bullying you and you hurt him and it kind of stuck with you no 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 but i have i mean i didn't get bullied but i you know i did come into altercations disagreements with other young punk kids you know and close to getting close to getting in altercations physical altercations I had to restrain myself a lot. Kelvin, I mean, you, people remember you from Tough and everything, but what before Tough, what did you first get started with? What was your first discipline? What did you start, start training in? Uh, it was res- wrestling. It was wrestling. Yeah. You, you seem to, uh, yeah, I mean, you're such a good striker. You're so powerful and you're so calm up there. How was the transition from the grappling to the striking? Yeah, I mean, uh, I had really, really good boxing coaches that instilled really good uh, fundamentals in me, and I think uh, that had a lot to do with it. You've talked before. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, Sorry, it was relatively easy, the transition, I guess. Um, But, yeah. You had, uh, I've heard rumors that you've at least thought about going back down to uh 170 i don't know if that's true or not um is there any truth to it is it something you've considered obviously you know you're focused on this uh, fight next week but is it something you've thought of and if so why yeah i just think it might be yeah it's something i've considered you know but uh i don't know we're something i've considered you know definitely something that's crossed my mind recently these days um and i've talked about it with my nutrition nutritionist as well um and some we might give it a try this year your last fight was in august man right so i mean what what what, what have you been up to brother what, what have you been doing uh man i i moved out of california okay that's interesting I moved, yeah i moved out of california moved out here to phoenix uh training out here with uh, uh a, a fight ready with uh don ted tito defranco tr- Henry Cejudo's gym. Oh, uh, I'll tell you, Henry Cejudo is becoming quite the the coach. Like he's getting like <laughs> you're getting John Jones over there. You're getting um, what's his name? Uh, uh the, the champ. Fucking the fucking <laughs> say it. Who is it? Oh, uh, John Whaley. No, yes, John Whaley. Uh, um, uh, David Figueredo. Yes, Figueredo, Figueredo. Yeah. Of course, Figueredo, Jimmy. I did so many fighters. But he has such a – what is going on over there? And, and then we got a Korean zombie out here training for this next fight. Yes. Um, we got Mark the Olympian Madsen out here as well as uh, myself getting ready for April 9th. Hey, Kelvin, can you tell me, is it like one big training room where you guys are all meeting at the same time? Is a lot of private work. What is going on over there at uh, uh, Coach yeah, Eric I, and Henry Shudo's gym over there? I, I – uh, too many gyms doing what we're doing out here you know uh, it's definitely different um a lot of specified specific training towards you and your person and um you know it's a it's a five-star treatment really is what it is is uh you know you know i like to compare it to like you know you go to a you go to buy you buy a suit and if it's nice feels nice but then you go buy a tailored suit a fitted suit and that's a whole different, uh, that's a whole different feel, you know? And you don't even notice how good the tailor, the, the other suit didn't fit until you see how well the tailored suit does fit. Right, right. Uh, you need a suit, man. You need to buy a fitted suit 
And uh, yeah, man, it, everything we've done uh, is different. Uh, it, it, it's we've done a collective. We've done a lot of collective group, a lot of communication between coaches and myself. And uh, uh, it's different, man. A lot of teams are not doing uh, what we're doing, I believe, and it's really, really different. Was it the re was that the reason for making the move? To, for this for the the work with Shahudo and that gym or were you I mean yeah there was a lot of reasons you know obviously I needed to change things up I needed a, some something to change right um so came out here made this big move and uh Henry Henry and I talked and he said you know he uh he believes in me this whole team behind me believes in me and uh he's a good group of people that he's got around him and I've surrounded myself with the same group of people, and uh, we've got a lot of good things going on. And can you talk about how this uh, Dracus Duplessis fight actually came to be? Because I know that uh, you you were not given a whole lot of time with this one. Yeah, you know, at first I thought the fight was off, and then the fight was going to have to be rescheduled, and I was okay with that, I guess, up to a point. I was just kind of thinking, like, man, we've done a lot of work, and I uh, put in a lot of effort for this camp. I can't let it just go to waste. And so I was texting uh, Ali, my manager, and uh, telling him, man, let's see if we can get a replacement. And there's a couple of names in there that we we tried to get, but they were unavailable, already booked up. And then um, our last resort was, um, sorry, I don't know if, if I'm pronouncing his name, Drykus or Drikus. I think it's Drykus Duplessis. There we go. You did better than I. <laughs> um, and we were just hopeful that he would accept the fight, and he did. And uh, thankfully, he stepped up last minute. Yeah. And I think, is it that I, I might, might be correct that none of his fights have gone the distance? And I think 11 times you have. So when you know a guy has that lack of experience going deep, at least in, in fights, do, does it kind of, I mean, I don't want to ask you your game plan. Obviously, you wouldn't give that away, but it must go into the way you think of approaching the fight, knowing the cardio you have and the ability to, to go a distance that, that you have. Yeah, I, I mean, I I know for damn sure I have a whole bunch of experience, you know, for so whatever he brings to the table, uh, I've seen it, seen most of it. Uh, but we're, it's not something we're relying on, you know. Um, I think... He poses some threats, but 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 I think overall we're we're the better fighter everywhere. But um, just gotta stay alert, execute, and uh, raise. Uh, you've lost a few fights lately, but they're, they're, you're in every fight, and they're all the there was one heel hook which I know is not a common thing for you, and that most of the times it's going the distance. I mean, you're in every fight. Um, has that kind of gone into your thinking at all about possibly switching weight, or is it just that you feel like you've run out of opponents that you want to? You know that you want some a fresh look at just a, a newer uh, division opponents. I think it, it it opened up a lot of doors for many reasons, you know, and uh, I think that's one of them. Just a lot of new faces, a lot of new challenges. I think um, it could do wonders for my career. You know, being a, fighting with people that are my size, my height. Um, so yeah, it's something to definitely considering. Oh, Jimmy, I, I don't want to cut you off. Sure, because it's. That this might be more serious though, because I'm reading. I'm reading here. Now, I don't know if this is a promotional thing that you got going on, or you tweeted that you're excited to see the new Marvel series Moon Knight. Now, hey. is that, is, are you, did you tweet that, or is that just a promotional thing? No, I, I'm very invested and very uh, involved in the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. Now, what do you mean? Now, talk to me. Do you watch these movies? I, I, I watch all the movies, I'm watching all the series. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Fucking yes, Jimmy! Another one! Jimmy, yeah. I, now I ask you, Jimmy, just like I had Curtis Blades on uh, the other day, and we were geeking out. We had Curtis on. We were geeking out about the Batman. When it's just me talking uh -oh. about... When I, talk about these, when I talk about these movies... Jimmy, he, he's a fucking bully. But when I have you on, Kelvin, look at him. He's quiet. Look at the little fuck. He's what? quiet. He's I've... not going to make fun of us. No. Yeah. It sounds like a great movie. <laughs> Add me on to talk about the Batman. I love the Batman. How, Kelvin, how great was that? Wasn't it fantastic? My, my it, was, it, was, it was a detective story. It was like detective. It was like oh, it was it dark. Was eerie. It was dark. It was, it was beautiful. It was insane. 
I will see the new Batman because I've heard, but I just, I never loved Christian Bale as Batman. I love him as everything else, but I just never loved him as Batman. And I can't think of a Batman that I loved. Like, I usually like the villains, in the, in, in, but I can't think of one guy who played Batman that I was like, fuck, you I love how he's doing it. Me a few years ago that the freaking Twilight guy was going to be playing Batman and you were going to like, I would have slept. Uh, Kelvin, did you see that um this the the uh the cut scene from the movie with uh I don't want to give any spoilers but the Joker, Joker. yeah yeah you see yeah. that that yeah, I'll tell you right now That's with awesome. the end with the ending of the movie with the scene in Arkham with the Riddler and the one we're talking about it plays so much better with that scene in the movie don't you think I was gonna say the opposite tell me what do you mean tell me I want to know the fact that they they kept him at the end and revealed him at the end. That was cool to me. I don't know. You, you like that. That I don't know. I thought it was not missed. It, I felt like it was almost out of place. Like, I'm like, oh, it's cool. But like, what the fuck? Now they're just throwing him in there. But yeah. the other one, they set it up. It's kind of weird. It reminded me, Jimmy, we're geeking out here. But it reminded me, Kelvin, of like, when like the detectives... Uh, the police used to go to like the Ted Bundy and ask his opinion on all the serial kills, right? Didn't it have that kind of feel to it? I got Jeff Jeff Dahmer kind of looking guy. Crazy. I'll tell you what a good Jimmy. Jimmy's wants to make fun of us so bad, but he knows no, no, you better cut the shit. Jimmy. <laughs> I I know when to shut my mouth. I'm just gonna listen. <laughs> okay, Kelvin's ready. He's gonna listen. Uh, Kelvin, do you know about Moon Knight? I heard it's supposed to be really good. Did you see it yet? I Watch the first episode right now. No spoilers. Yeah, you nay. You like it? Yes. Yeah, you good, hesitated. Good good. First, episode. first, I'm going to watch it tonight with the family. By the yeah. way, I'll, I'll tell you what superhero movie. It's not even a superhero movie that I love that I, I didn't uh, think I would love. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, I thought was great. I love that movie. I didn't expect to, you know, that was a comic book movie I didn't expect to like. It was depressing. That's why you liked it. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. Our- it was nice. It was a good one. He won all kinds of awards for that one, didn't he? I think he did, yeah. And you're right, it was dark. And it seems like at one point, superhero movies all kind of went dark. And I don't know if that's just the trend or it's because these guys were always kind of dark deep down, but comic books just didn't know how to show that uh, for a long time. I, I don't understand why they've done that, but I kind of like it. I want to tell Kelvin about one movie that he might have some downtime, you know, leading up to the fight. He has some, you know, he's cutting some weight, whatever it is. Do you ever see Dread? With uh, Carl Urban, or is it Kurt Urban? Sylvester Stallone. Not Sylvester Stallone, not Judge Dredd. <laughs> Dredd, no, I didn't catch it. I listen, did not catch listen, it. listen, you got to see it. Uh, producers, is it Carl Urban or Kurt Urban? Who is it? Look it up, guys. Dredd, it comes, I think it was like 2012. Dude, if you like the new Batman, it's such really? a good fuck. The most underrated movie, a superhero okay. movie ever, in my okay. opinion. Check it out. You're going to love it. Kurt, hey, Curtis Blades gives it a thumbs up. Carl Urban is in it. Carl Urban, he's from uh, The Boys. You ever see The Boys? The it's, Boys. It's, the, the Boys is on Amazon Prime. It's like the, it's like, it's like the soupy, it's like the Justice League, but if they were assholes and they're like a lot of nah. fucking fighting. Okay. You got to listen. <laughs> big, listen, I can tell you like a brown belt as a geek. I'm like a red belt. I'm going to give you some extra shows to watch. <laughs> and you're okay. going to love this. Let me take you under my wing as a geek. And, Please. Come on, man. I'm going to give you some stuff to watch when you're cutting weight. <laughs> Such a good movie, Jenny. Dread, you would love that. Yeah, I, I remember Judge Dread. I don't think I liked it. Not Judge Dread, motherfucker. It's a totally different movie. Oh. Same character, but it's not Sylvester Sloan going, I am the law. Not yeah. that shit. Oh, okay. Man, when are we going to see your return to stand up? What are we doing? When are we going to see your return to stand up? Jimmy, that, it came back to me just now in a sudden. The Come front on. row of the fucking Laugh Factory. Who Come was there when I did my one and only stand-up appearance? Bro, you killed it. You killed it. You I did ne- okay. I did okay with that Adrian bit. I don't know anything about anything, but I, I was laughing my ass off. I'm telling you right now, it made me feel so good that Kelvin was, was laughing. You know? <laughs> I had Kelvin there. I had Higgin Machado in the in the. I mean, it was so Jimmy. Didn't you get but, nervous in front of your friends? Though? Like I would. I, I I hate when people I know are in the audience. Even after all these years, I hate it. Jimmy, it, to me, it's like if you had one cage fight, 
right? It might not be a big deal for guys who did a lot of cage fighting. Or right. They fight to me. I'd be like, oh, that's cute. But to you, it'd be like, I don't understand why it was special. We got to see, mate, you got to make your return, man. Oh, no, that, that, I only had one bit and I used it. Oh, I'm no. Done. I, now I just get, I just like to riff with Jimmy. <laughs> riff. <laughs> Go down to Washington State Park. Wait, what about third. you? Yeah, hey, why don't you jump on the next I, fucking um, Adam Hunter's special? No, I'm no, I'm I'm nowhere near. You have a good sense of humor, I can tell that. I like funny stuff, but I can't do I can't do what the, what they do, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Edwin's up there doing some shit. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's like fighting though. I, I I love watching fights. I love it, but I can't do it. You know, what I mean, it's just or I know if I did do it, it would end badly and quickly. Exactly. I like that Jimmy's not even trying to encourage you to do it. Jimmy feels like- No, no, but if, I understand what he means though. If it's, if it's not something a person's inclined to want to do, he doesn't seem like he wants to do it. Like if he wanted to do it and it was nervous, I would encourage him, but he doesn't seem like he wants to. It's true, Jimmy. No. It's not no. for everybody. No, you know? I enjoy it. I love being around, being around it. I was going to the, the comedy store a lot down in LA, in LA. Oh shit. Yeah, I enjoy, I like real- I like, do uh, Rogan all the time. Joey Diaz. I'll be honest. Like I've been on porn sets. I've watched them shoot porn and it's amazing to watch, but I, I was watching go like, I could never, that's just still not something I think that I want to try professionally. Like, you know what I mean? I can enjoy it, but you know, I know I wouldn't be able to do it. My question is, what are you doing on the porn sites? You little creep. What, you I, had, I had a, I had a mop. <laughs> <laughs> was that your first job? No, I was hosting the porn awards years ago, so I got to go and watch them make movies. Is that like an AVN thing? Yes, AVN. I hosted it a couple of times. And uh, the first time was with Jenna Jameson, so I got to go and watch her do like a high-budget movie and then watch Independent. It was really an interesting thing, and you learn a lot of respect for, for what they do. It's Really, it's a difficult job to do in front of people. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> it's a difficult job to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're juicing, if you know what I mean. Probably yes. Pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And needles, cavern Yeah, yeah, yeah. The needles and pills are, are encouraged. <laughs> There's something called cavern jet that uh, I've never done it, but I think you can shoot it like into your dick or by your dick, and it like you're supposed to really work well. Hey, I'll stick to a blue chew. Yeah, me too. <laughs> right, Kelvin? I'm not, listen, I'm not horny enough to stop sticking my needles in my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever have you ever tried a blue pill? Calvin, have you ever tried a blue pill? No, actually. Oh, they're great. I they're just great. 30, so no, not yet. I guess that's we forget how young Calvin is because we've been watching you for so many years. Like literally, I just I can't remember a time without without uh Calvin Gastelum. And all of a sudden that's right, you're only fucking 30 years old. People forget how young you are. <laughs> yeah, I've mean, been in it for a minute. I know, that's crazy, man. But isn't that encouraging? Because whatever you decide to do, whether you want to stay at middleweight or if you go down to welterweight, you have so many years of fighting left. Like you could have a whole second half and, and, and go into any direction you want to. That's got to make you feel good that you're making this possible decision at a very young age. Yeah, no, I feel good about it. And then I feel I, I'm in a really good place. Uh, I feel I'm with the right people, surrounded by the right people. And uh, I feel like this is a restart in my career. It feels like uh, Kelvin 2.0. And I did, and um, yeah, man, April 9th, get to yes. Get All right, buddy. Well, look, thank you for you know, it's been two years. I hope you don't wait so long to come on again. Uh, Dreykus to Plessy, uh, it should be a very interesting fight. And uh, whatever you decide to do, you know, you're a fan favorite, you know, that everybody loves watching you. So, uh, good luck on uh, April 9th, buddy, and we'll talk to you again, okay? Check All out right. Dread. Thanks, Calvin. Take care, man. Like yeah, Wait, what's it called? Moon Knight. But well, that—that's the one on. That's the show. Okay. Plus, he's the nicest guy in, in UFC. He really, he really is a, a nice. But then again, very few fighters aren't nice. I say that a lot because I'm, you know, uh, you, you guys are all pretty easygoing guys. I'm a very easygoing guy. I'm not smacking. Well, I, you're not easygoing. You're very high, high energy. Very I, high energy. I'm not easygoing. I'm no, no, meaning you're a high energy guy. You're a nice guy, but you're high energy. I'll just yell two numbers to that. 1738.
I don't even know what that means. It's a, it's a rap. It's in a rap song. You the, the kids right now are going, oh, that's what that song they're hearing is. It's probably a year. 1730 is probably a year. Something happened. Yo, you know what I'm doing? Uh, I'm doing next Saturday. I'm going to be working with the NYPD, the New York City um, ah. Police Department's jujitsu team. Oh, that's great. Yeah, they got a jujitsu club going on. So I'm going to go there and show them some things. That's nice. Do you ever get, like, do you, I guess you're so confident because you're so good at it, but you don't get nervous going into like a place like where all these cops are going, okay, now I'm going to instruct you. Like you just, I guess you get to a level where you just know that you're qualified no matter where you go. Well, you know what you know. You don't get into a, you never go to a theater and be like, holy shit, there's a lot of seats out there and there's people and I got to go make them. No, it's what you do. This is what I've been doing since I was, my high school was this. This was my high school. My 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 college was this. Look, the yeah. heads of Gracie, New York City. That was my college. So I've been doing this since I'm nineteen twenty. I'm forty seven now. So I mean, I don't know. I'm so used to like I, I like I said. I, I dropped in uh, to Astoria Queens a couple of weeks ago. And my buddy he was opening up his uh, I should say reopening a school over there because he got closed down and he, he and he and he got a new spot. He opened it up and and uh, you know packed house and. Went there and just, I'm not trying to show something I don't know. I'm sure, right. you know, I'm not trying to show, I'm not, I'm not going outside my means and being like, all right, this is the, the latest thing that they're doing in the submission grappling circuit. No, I'm showing them stuff that I know how to defend themselves. You know what I mean? Like you don't have a, not like, you know, you don't have that fear that you're going to, all right, let me just show you how to do it. And, and it's something fairly basic. And the guy's just going to be better at it. And you're going to look bad. Like that would terrify me. Like if I had to go teach somebody or, or give a class on joke telling or something, I'd be so paranoid that I wasn't going to do it right. Or I was going to forget it. What do you mean? Like somebody would be better at it? I don't, I don't know. I just, it, it's an irrational. I, I don't know how to put it in jujitsu terms, but like, if you're going to go and show somebody, like if you call somebody over uh, to go ahead and just kind of walk through a move with them that you're just going to make a terrible mistake and look bad. Like I would just have that fear as a comic. No, because I, well, I know the mechanics and I try to get a proper uki, a proper a guy that helps uh, that, that you demonstrate. What's an uki? Well, yeah, it's a fancy way of saying a training partner, somebody that you demonstrate the moves on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if I have somebody that's like really rigid and it can make you look not as smooth because they're kind of fighting you on it when they should just be either holding you down or giving you the proper energy. You know, so you want to, you know, there's time to go live when the guy, it will resist you hundred percent. And then you will make things happen. That's when you're live training, but when you're repping, they got to give you the prop energy. You're pinning me down this way. You're distributing your weight this way to, to stop me or to hold me down. And I'm going to show you something to counter that, you know? So, you know, are you, here's what, yes. Let me ask you, are you ever afraid that you're, you're doing like a full length thing and you're going to show them something to counter it and it's not going to work. And you can be like, Oh, I thought that would counter it, but it doesn't. No, because it's something I, I would only show something that I've done personally thousands of times. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a fundamentals guy. I'm a guy that if somebody holds you here, there's only so many ways he can, he can hold you in. So when I'm, I'm not trying to ever, I'll, I, I mean, I commit to my technique, but I never force a technique. There's a big difference. So I'll be showing something. If I feel like I'm hitting a wall, there's something else to flow to. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, That's the you, beauty of jujitsu, the fluidity, where if you hit a wall, you're like, oh man, I guess I'm just screwed. No. If I try to get, for instance, if somebody's mounted on me and they're not holding me, they're not grabbing me anywhere, they're just holding me, I will break their posture and do something called an elbow escape, maneuver out from underneath them with my lower body and then retrieve guard. But if I'm trying to do that and somebody's holding around my head, the mounted and holding around my head, they're anchoring themselves in, okay, but now you show me the way out. You're holding me with your left arm around my head. I'm going to hold it so you can't brace out. Now the same side, that your left leg, I'm going to hold that leg in with my leg. I'm going to bridge and roll, chopping a whole side so you cannot uh, base out. If he does base out, I go back to the elbow escape. So, you know, it's about understanding body mechanics. Uh, but what if it was a guy who wasn't jujitsu trained, but he had you pinned down on your back, but he was bigger than you. You wouldn't worry about that? Now we're just being silly. <laughs> Jimmy, he's so funny. It wouldn't I worry you? Jiu-Jitsu. I seen, um, <laughs> I was at the uh, Neutral Wolf here in uh, near my house and uh, in Long Island. It's the uh, a, a place for smoothies. So some kid came in. They're nice there. They like me there, right? And so uh, some guy came in. This guy, Austin, he's coming out of my school tonight because he asked for a picture. He, he watches Dana White looking for a photo. So I invited him down tonight. He looks like a regular dude. I guarantee this guy's going to be hooked. You got to look on my, look on my Instagram. Matt's I do actually. 
there's a, I, put, I posted something. I don't normally do this, but somebody DM'd me. And, he, and it's a little story about, he goes, oh, I met you at, at Disney. I and see you, it. Yeah, your wife was, but you want to read it? Read it. Um, I don't do this often. However, I wanted to reach out and say thank you. I saw you at Disney World in December when your wife was loading you up with a bunch of bags as I was walking out. I approached you and we talked for a couple of minutes. You asked me if I ever considered uh, BJ because- BJJ. Uh, what- Oh, sorry, my glasses are on. Uh, BJJ, because... <laughs> you mean, now you're making like I'm asking the guy for a blow, John. <laughs> <laughs> you're ruining everything. Hold up, because one of the main, many reasons was the fountain of youth. I wanted to let you know that your words have stuck with me, and I have uh, since signed up to the uh, Carlson Gracie Academy here in Albuquerque. I stepped out of my comfort zone and discovered a new love. So thank you, Mr. Sarah. Well, you're very welcome. You see the picture there, me and him at Disney World? You're very welcome, Carl. Very nice, yeah. Now, Carl is a jiu-jitsu man. And I remember him. I remember meeting that guy. Because you know what happens. We got all the bags and we walk out of the Disney. Before we, you know, we just got off the Tron. My wife, the kids, they got to use the bathroom. So they're putting bags on my head. My, I'm like, I'm like a rack. They put everything on me. And then that fella came over. He is the champ. Yeah, the champ. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? You're still glowing, Ju- uh, Juliana. You, you're glowing still. Is this? Are you still on cloud nine? Because it looks like you are. Yes, it's it's actually uh, my glowing skin is brought to you by No BS Skincare Line. Oh, nice. Now, have you gotten a few offers since you won? Like all of a sudden, now you're the champion, and people want to be in business with you. Yeah, I just got endorsed by this amazing um, skincare line called No BS. I got Joan Soda, which I used to drink all the time when I was a kid. I, I got more coming in, Tyson 2.0. I got Columbia Care up here. I got some sponsors and I'm looking for more endorsements. This is fantastic. This is how far the, the, the sport has come. I just got a bunch of science. I didn't get shit <laughs> when I put. Look at this. I'm happy for you, though. Listen. We were just talking earlier, myself and, and little Jimmy. Jimmy wanted to know if you thought that you needed a chair to tame the lioness. And I go, Jimmy, don't ask it that stupid What? Stuff. A chair to tame the lioness? Jimmy, that's not what you were asking me. Don't no, think- what, what I wanted to ask you, um, that's a uh, very strange. <laughs> All right, Matt. Uh, Matt is trying to put his question on me. Here's what I wanted to ask you. Because somebody said that, it was a giant upset. And some people said, well, that's insulting to say it's an upset. I said, she's probably not insulted by that. And Matt said, ask her if she needed a chair to tame the lioness. I'm like, I don't want to ask that question. <laughs> well, the truth is, is that her name's like the lioness or whatever, but like, according to the birth chart and everything like that, I'm born in August. I'm a true Leo lion through and through. So whenever she says that she's the lioness, I'm like, no, I am. I'm the lion. I'm actually the lion. And so that's what I needed to, to show everybody else is that, you know, she could say she's the lioness whenever, but the reality is, is that that's actually me. But it was, it was, it was an amazing win. And do you take offense when someone says it was like, oh my God, such an upset or, because it's not meant to be disrespectful. Do you take it as if, Hey, they didn't think I could beat her. Or do you just understand you're beating such a dominant champion? No, for me, it's um, more sweeter that everyone slept on me and that I had the opportunity to shock the world. It's a it's an awesome place to be in. And I think that, you know, for all the time that I've been fighting in the UFC, it's kind of been like this blanket that people want to throw on me that like I can't win you know and it's almost like this thing that it's like everyone's always putting me as an underdog and so I've kind of just been riding this dark horse thing out since the beginning of my career on the ultimate fighter where everyone counted me out and it's kind of been like that through the trajectory of my career and I think that by winning the title kind of puts the stamp on that like I'm done I'm done with you guys putting me in a box as far as this person that is just the underdog all the time like if you don't believe in me I'm sorry but I'm here I made a statement and I just wanted to put everybody on notice to say I'm still here I've been in the division just as long as all the rest of the girls it didn't annoy you I'm sorry Jimmy because I mean similar shoes in a sense where people probably were both afraid for us myself included like when I was going to fight George you're going to fight uh, Amanda. People like that don't know any better, 
Like they were probably looking at you almost afraid for you. Did you feel that? Did you feel any of that? And did you see them afterwards? And not the old, I told you so, but been like, you know, I got this covered. I mean, how'd you deal with these people that were really afraid for you? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I think that that's one of those things where people that don't know the sport are fearful. And the only people that truly believed was me and my immediate team, my mom, my dad, my brothers and sisters, and my my coaches, my coaches are the only ones but like I'm in the gym. And I know that everyone else around the gym is like, she don't stand a chance, you know, and so I think that's one of the things that I, I love the most and that even makes it again sweeter is when you go in and you hush everybody up to say I told you so um one of my broadcast partners was literally I asked him straight up I said do you think that I'm gonna win and he was like you know and like that was enough for me to be like I quit I'm done commentating until after this fight like I need to focus because he thinks that I can't do it and I cannot wait to prove him wrong and so that for me was, you know, I, I had a ton of that. I had a ton of people that were like, she's going to get mauled, including Mike Tyson, who literally was like, she's going to get crushed. And then he told me that the other day, he was like, I was wrong, you know? So it's, it's great. I think it's also too, because Amanda was, had beaten so many dominant fighters and she had beaten fighters who were dominant in all aspects of MMA. She didn't just beat strikers. I mean, she beat people who were great on the ground. I mean, every, she beat every single facet of mixed martial arts in a very dominating, I mean, fashion. Destroying Cyborg, I think, uh, at that weight was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen a fighter do. So that's probably why is, it, is you, it's been a long time since anybody has seen any weakness in any part of her game. You must have seen something or been able to exploit something that other people hadn't seen. Can I ask what that was now that the fight is over? Yeah, it was uh, dating back to, to five years ago. You know, when I started in the division at, in 2013, you know, Rhonda came in on the scene and Dana just handed her a belt. Hey, welcome to the promotion. Here's your belt. And that was the same exact time that he started the ultimate fighter. So when Rhonda just got gifted a belt and had to fight one person, I had to fight four people. And when I fought those four, I was ready to go for the title then. Well, then I got her and Rhonda uh, came back to jump the line after she got knocked out by a man or by a Holly. So I was already in line for that title shot when I Kat Zingano at UFC 200 and Kat Zingano had just recently beat Amanda. Now Amanda's the champion. She beats uh, Misha and then Rhonda gets to come in and just jump the line and become uh, the, the, content, the contender to fight for the title. Rhonda gets knocked out and I'm like, he cut the line. Amanda said that I was next. Cat just beat Amanda. I just beat Cat. Like I'm next. And so this was something that was dated back to, you know, over five, six years ago when the divisions was new and just getting started. And so I had been calling for that fight forever. I had seen how she fights and I knew that I could beat her. And so I just needed my opportunity. But what made it sweet was that Amanda had all of these fights, you know, it, the fight wouldn't have meant the same if I had beat her back then. It had to have been the buildup. It had to have been, she knocked out Amanda or uh, Rhonda. She knocked out Holly Holm. She beat Cyborg. You know, she went through this list and that's what I think made my fight so much better is because she had to go do that in order for me to go, you know, stomp a mud hole in her. So that way I could become the champion. And so I think that's what made it so much better for me is victory wise is because she had this, you know, long, Sure. Of, of legends that she killed. Well, you know, you brought up Kat Zingano, and that's funny, I was going to bring her up also. It had to give you some confidence knowing that you bested the girl that beat uh, Amanda. And so it's like, and not only did you did you beat her, you beat her the way that, that, like, that she beat Amanda the, the way you fight in a sense, where she but she she had she she overcome diversity and she used her grappling. So you by beating Kat Zingano, I know styles make fights, like you know, that had to give you a lot of confidence going in in there with her, no? Or Absolutely. I mean, I was ready and confident to fight Amanda the same night that she beat Misha to become the champion. I mean, I fought Kat Zingano that night. She fought and beat Misha to become the champion. And it was then that I'm literally cage side screaming. That's my fight. I'm next. I'm next for the title. And, and Amanda said I was next. If you go back to the press conference, she was like the next person in line is Juliana. And, and then Rhonda got to cut the line. So absolutely beating Kat Zingano gave me the feather in the cap that, you know, if she can beat Amanda, I absolutely can beat Amanda because I just beat her. 
How does it work, like as a fighter, when like you also both had opposite uh, results with Jermaine uh, Duranime. So how do you not let that psych you out in a negative way, whereas one will build you up and help you? How do you prevent one from knocking down your confidence a little bit? Honestly, that fight with Jermaine was one of those things where it's like I was a little bit, I would say, concerned that she's so tall and she's got such great, you know, K1 style kickboxing and she's such a great um, accomplished striker. That to me was the mental block, the hurdle that I had to get over. Then I'm backing Jermaine up. I'm punching Jermaine in the face. I'm winning this fight. And then I get, you know, flopped unconscious like a fish, you know, dying under the lights. And I'm waking up being like, what the heck just happened? I think that that gave me the feather in my cap to know that I can hang with literally anyone and that I don't need to be worried about the accolades that they have. I have my own accolades. And, you know, they say that she was such a great striker. If you look back at the stats, I outstruck her. And so it makes me feel like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you were walking in 135 pounds or 145 pounds, whatever the weight class is, you know, I will fight you and I will be confident that you're going to remember that you were in a fist fight with me. And, you know, wins and losses come with the sport, but I'm confident to get locked in that octagon with literally anybody that you put in this uh, in front of me. And Matt, you might remember what Dean said. I, we talked to Dean Thomas and he said something about he felt that, he, I mean, Amanda didn't, he felt like he almost looked at her like at one point she just knew that she didn't have whatever energy it was. I'm not, not saying she gave up, but she just knew that you had her. Um, did you feel that at all? Did you feel like, uh, did you feel her wilt at all or, or her will kind of give out at any point? Me? Yes. Yeah, of course. Um, and, and there's little tells, right? There's tells leading up to the fight. One of the tells for me was that I had been calling for this fight for five years and she would find a roundabout way to go to every other opponent but me and would not even whisper my name. Another uh, tell that I saw was we had been scheduled to fight in August and then she didn't show up. And so I'm just like, there's little things that are like little games that need to be won leading up to the fight. And those two things stuck out in my mind was like, she don't want to fight me. She don't want anything to do with me. And so leading up to the fight, I was confident, especially having nine months to prepare for this person. It went from March to August. And then she would push from August to December. And anytime you have nine months to get ready for somebody is going to be very dangerous. I was ready to go. And I think that one of the things that, gave me that confidence is at the press conference when she's literally talking so much telling me that I'm never going to be a champion that I'll never that like she's trying to convince me and try to make me believe what she thinks and that you're never going to be the champion and you know it and you know it you know I'm just like she's scared she's it's just a little fight it's just a little fight like it's gonna be fine but she was she was scared and and I could see that because her verbal um talk was just all all mouth, you know. Now you guys, you're set to uh, to coach the Ultimate Fighter versus Amanda. Yes, is this, is this is this already been filmed? It's already been filmed. It's done. It's over. Ooh. Oh, so it's it premieres. Uh, they say on ESPN Plus starting May third. Yes, sir. Now, now I feel everything's about experience. Now. Right. You live that Ultimate Fighter, much like we have a lot in common, me and Julie. We were on the Ultimate Fighter. We won, we won the Ultimate Fighter. We won the title. Yeah, buddy, look at this. But anyway, uh, you have experience. You were on the show before. So, I mean, is there any mental warfare? I don't want you to give any spoilers, but how did you handle that situation? Was it a good experience? How was it? You know, it was a great experience. My obligation is to my team. My obligation is to be all in 110% on my team. So as far as mental warfare goes, I don't need to have any mental warfare. I just need to win my fights and make sure that my team is winning and that my team is being set up to be the most successful fighters that they can be. And that was 110% my focus throughout the entire competition is just making sure that my fighters have everything that they need and that I'm giving the most that I can to them. Uh, being a contestant compared to being a coach, like being a contestant, like with myself, we were hoping they'd play music for us in the van. I mean, it was just weird. You felt not like a prisoner, but you definitely had restrictions on your freedoms to, compared to being a coach. I mean, you got your jerseys, you do what you like to have a breakfast for you. How was that? How was it different? How'd that feel coming back as a coach? 
it was different because I got to like go do my own thing after I got done coaching and I felt bad because like you said, I mean, you're not a prisoner, but at the same time, you kind of are and your schedule is dictated by somebody else every single day. And so I think that it was great for me because I could go out on the week. I didn't go out on the weekend, but I mean, I could go out to dinner if I wanted or take my daughter to go play somewhere. You know, I could live life normally and then they literally could do nothing but go to the gym and go home and gym and come home and that's it. So I felt like oh it's much better to be on this side of the <laughs> spectrum for sure yeah and you know what we're going through also so i had to help as a coach you know what they were going through i did and i noticed too that like i developed um these i wasn't expecting to like care too much about them in the sense that i'm like i'll only care if somebody makes me care that if they jump off the page to me but i ended up caring and having like eight new children that i'm like these people are going to be a part of my life forever and now they're family and now i'm literally going to do everything that i can to nourish or like be there for them mentally or emotionally whatever i can do like it's a lifelong thing now i'll have this tie to these people and i do i did walk away you know caring about them all each as individuals and how do you feel about uh, do you have any any possible date for a rematch with amanda i'm guessing that's going to be the next fight do you know the date of that I, I don't have a date. I mean, I heard July and then I heard them throwing out August. Um, I heard back like two days ago that uh, there is not a solidified date yet. You also uh, were very honest when you talked about uh, how Habib being kind of dismissive hurt your feeling. It, like, it bothered you and, and you were honest about that, which I, I love. I love when people just speak how they feel. Have you had any, has he reached out to you at all since then or has there been any anything further? No, no, I ran into him at the apex. I think one of his guys was fighting uh, Bobby Green. And and so I saw him outside the, the apex. And of course, he didn't say anything to me. And I didn't say anything to him. I, I have nothing to say. There's been a lot of people that have come to his defense to say, you know, the language barrier is what happened there. And that's not really what he meant. And it kind of got taken out of context. Um, I don't know. And it, it's fine. I mean, he is, you know, Khabib's Khabib and I'm me and if he likes it doesn't like it no skin off of my nose and it really doesn't matter to me it was just one of those things where it was like you know when when the greats talk and and then it's not in your favor it's kind of just like ouch you know but oh well everyone's entitled to their everyone's entitled to their opinion and in his culture women don't fight you know what I mean so it's kind of one of those things where it might be a cultural difference I didn't think you look watching that fight I mean uh we all know how incredible Amanda is you were very dominant. I, I didn't think that you got lucky. I mean, you you clearly deserve to win that fight. H how do you handle the mentality now of now the target's on your back, you're the champion, and it is a different place to be now where everyone is now focused on you, and she may be fighting with a different goal than she had being a defending champion. Does that mean anything to you or no? Well, the most important thing is that I still view myself as a challenger, and I still view myself as you know, they can say that they give you the nice belt and that shiny, that's cute, but I'm not content with that. And I'm not happy with that. And by getting that, I feel like it's now day one. And now I've started back over again, almost like when you get your black belt, you finally get your black belt all this time. And then all of a sudden you become a white belt all over again. My job is not done. It has just begun by now that I've become the champion. And so I still feel like I'm just as hungry, just as motivated, just as focused as I was before, because again maybe you didn't think that it was luck but there's a lot of people that think that it was just a fluke and my job is to go again one more time and say this wasn't a fluke i told you i'm here and i need i need some respect i need some acknowledgement i need you guys to understand that i'm the new champion and you may have already clarified this uh didn't you said something to the effect of uh when she uh left att after the loss it could be about not trusting other people in the gym I, could you elaborate on that because i'm not i wasn't quite sure what you meant uh, listen i don't know why she uh left the gym i i don't i know she's been there for a long time she's established her career there i don't know if it was a fallout with dan lambert i don't know if it was a fallout because kayla harrison they're asking her leading up by, hey, Amanda, so how do you feel about Kayla Harrison being the team captain of American Top Team? And she was like, 
news to me. You know what I mean? I think that's, it's like, Kayla, we're friends, we're training partners, but now Kayla's crying, devastated that I beat Amanda because now there goes Kayla's chances of fighting her friend. Like who needs enemies with friends like these? You know, I think it was a little bit of a scenario where she probably felt like they cared more about Kayla than they do about her because Kayla's the next hottest thing since sliced bread. I truly don't know what the issue is, um, but yeah, I mean, firing your whole team and going back to the drawing board, maybe that's what she feels she needs to do. I don't know, but you know, I, I wish her the best. I wish her a successful camp and um, you know, whatever her reasons are, I know that they're probably for her and her head very well justified. Yeah. You wonder if there was anything. And, and again, you guys both having like been with teams and in camps would know better than me. You wonder if there was anything leading up to it, maybe in a fight or two before where there was little seeds of like, eh, I'm not happy with this. And then when, the, when that devastating loss comes, you're like, okay, I, I have to go. I'm sure it wasn't something that was just spur of the moment. Maybe it was something that had been uh, brewing for a while. Yeah, you know, you're probably right, but I'll tell you this, those types of feelings and those scenarios in the gym, they're icky feelings and they suck. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And it's something that is uh, very heartbreaking, honestly, because it's a, it's a, almost like a betrayal of trust and you have put in all this time, this is your family. And when the walls get turned against you and everything starts coming in on you, that's a, that's a shitty feeling. And so, uh, you know, my heart is is with her in that sense. And I do feel like that would be a hard scenario for anyone. And I, I do hope that she uh, figures it out and does what's best for her. Shoot. Well, I'm going to be watching May 3rd, Jimmy. Yeah. I, I, I like I like myself some Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. But I want to see the dy dynamic, what's going to happen. If there's any drama, the fights, are the fights, I, you can't say they suck, but are the fights, do they deliver? The fights, the fights always deliver, you know how the ultimate fighter goes, but like how incredible is it? The 30th season, like what other show has been on for 30 seasons? That's incredible. I, now you made me feel really old again. I mean, I'm, I was on the fourth season, you understand? The fourth on the season. Third. I have a contestant from the second season. He's what is it? Yes, he's from the second season of the ultimate fighter. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wait, wait who was who? Uh, Bobby McDonald. Was on the second season. Uh, was on the second season of The Ultimate Fighter. He comes back for season thirty. How, how old is the guy? I think he's like forty-two. I don't know. Man, he hasn't competed in thirteen years, and he's come back on The Ultimate Fighter. It's incredible. Well, that's a story. Yeah, that's, that's a real story, right, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I think this is hope for you. You're never too late to get in there, Jimmy. Well, I have to start training. I mean, I, I, I'm 53 now. I did take a little bit of kickboxing, but then the pandemic hit. You know how it is, Julian. I've, I've just been too tired uh, to get back into it, and I'm a little fatter than I should be. Um, well, this guy will give you all the motivation you need, Jim. Uh, well, you're, listen, I, I'm, 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 you really seem to be uh, handling this as, as well as a person can as a new champion. You seem like you're very level-headed about what you need to do and not getting crazy and and carried away with, because uh, you've seen other people win belts and it just seems like they go on the uh, the Rocky Three tour, as we call it, and, and like forget like, no, you have to defend this against somebody and it's that's not gonna be easy. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of caught um, between a rock and a hard spot in that sense. There's people that want me to go here and want me to go there and and I'm going. Um, I, I, I will be at the US Open in Miami this weekend. I'll be doing the coin toss to see who serves first and, and getting on the desk to talk to those, you know, uh, tennis people. And then uh, following that up with uh, WrestleMania on uh, Saturday and Sunday in Dallas. And so I'm just, I'm going. I need to, to get in front of as many people as possible. I need people to tune into my fight and um as soon as you know april 4th hits it's you know do not disturb zone and it's back to work back to the lab and literally don't bother me you know i right now it's kind of that time where i i got to get in front of people but sure. then, as soon as camp starts it's a done deal it's like don't even call me yeah you deserve it you yeah. deserve it buddy come on man this is this comes with winning that crown and then when it's time to get back to grind and you grind but this is it, the, the coin toss. And I was reading, did your brother, somebody, you guys grow up on the wrestling? Who likes the pro wrestling? Uh, no, my brother, uh, my brother is uh, a big wrestling fan, like a pro wrestling fan. So he would always try all his moves out on us. Oh, that's, that's well, I'm sure he's going to be watching the WrestleMania when you're there. That, look, 
it's awesome. Are you doing anything at WrestleMania? Or are you are you just going to watch? No, so I'm gonna be a, a guest to Ric Flair to support Charlotte Flair and to watch her uh, defend her belt against Ronda. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so I mean, we'll see how it goes. I I, I don't know. Only Vince knows. Yeah, he does. <laughs> well, very exciting. yeah. Congratulations, Juliana. It was it was a really an incredible win. It was a very dominant win and a very impressive win and you deserved it. And we love Amanda, but you know, you are clearly uh, deserved to win that fight. So enjoy it. And, and I can't wait for the uh, rematch. Thank you guys. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Very nice. Real honest person. Very she's booming with booming with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what I mean about when somebody wins the belt? Sometimes you're like, do they know they have to defend it? She seems like she has a very even way of looking at it. Yeah, hey, you're looking at one of them. I was at it. Jimmy, I was like Robert Baratheon. I was better at winning the crown than holding on to it. I am not listen. Except I wasn't a drunken whoring. But I'm t- <laughs> if you ever seen with Rhodes, sorry. But I'm telling you now, you know, some people just like, I like the whole underdog thing. That was my route. Yeah, a lot in common, but this one, she she looks the type to be. That's a champion right there. That's a champion. You got yeah. me. Yeah, I do. Jimmy, we'll talk a lot more next week about everything else. Yes, we will. As far as Moon Knight, the uh, new Disney Plus movie that I'm going to check out later. Yes. You no, know, Will Smith's a punk, but uh, sorry, just throw that. Yeah, in. he's really annoying to, to have to have done that. I love Chris too. Chris is such a great comic. Um. Yeah. It's going to be around on TV forever now. Yeah. But you know what, though? Everyone is saying that Chris really did seem like uh, he, he, he made, made the most of it. Everybody knew it was a weird situation. He wasn't hurt, obviously. I mean, he wasn't hitting it knocked down. He was just shocked and probably didn't believe it happened. I'm sure there's a million things going through his head with comebacks yeah. or things that he could have said. And I'm sure that type of thing's going through his head. Yeah. Like, you know, anything. Like, I can't believe you knocked out that alien in Independence Day hitting like that. You got to be kidding me. Hit like a bitch. Yeah. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a good comeback. But yeah. it would be, first of all, he did punch that alien and said, welcome to Earth. That, that, that ruined Independence Day. I hated that scene. That was the stupidest scene ever. A big alien thing, he punched him and then knocked him out. I didn't like that either. Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth, motherfucker. Yeah. He said motherfucker to Chris Rock, though. He did. Yeah. Fucking mouth. I don't like that negative shit. Listen. Jimmy, you know what I do like? I like you. You have such good energy. Well, I like you too, Matt. We always have fun. What do you want to plug, dude? Um, how about this? Right now, I have tickets going on sale tomorrow for Delaware, June the 4th. Right now, there's a pre-sale happening uh, for the Queen Theater in Delaware, June 4th. I, I believe the uh, pre-sale uh, password is either chip or laugh. One of the two. Uh, but tickets are on sale tomorrow. And uh, let's just go with the 8th and 9th. I'm going to be in Poughkeepsie, New York uh, of April. And then June, I think 10th and 11th, I'm going to be in uh, Uncle Vinny's in New Jersey. So come see me in one of those places, Washington, D.C., wherever you want. I'll be around. <laughs> Uncle Vinny's. Uncle Vinny's. Hey. Oh, uh, shit. Great little club. How is Uncle Vinny? Good? Yes, a great club. All right. Me, I got nothing going on. I'm on Cameo, you know, I'm doing that stuff. You know, Matt Sarah BJJ on Instagram for now. I don't know why I say that. People want to just say hello. Sure. And, uh, you know, SarahBJJ.com for all your jujitsu needs. Jimmy, I will see you. So I'll see you in, uh, wow, next week. Yep. This one flew by, huh? It did. I'll talk to you over the weekend, though. Damn right we will. Jimmy, I'll talk to you soon. Unfiltered Army, we love you. Yes, thank you to Juliana and to Kelvin. All right, buddy, I'll see you next week. Later, buddy.